Welcome all to Westboro on such a uh, cool July day. <laughs> a special welcome to Governor Healy, Congressman McGovern, Secretary Tutwiler, Secretary Walsh, USD Administrator Long, Senator Moore, uh, and other esteemed guests of the town of Westboro. And thank you for choosing Westboro to showcase the Summer Child Nutrition Program. I was happy to hear that Westboro, having many families with food insecurities, entered has been entered into the reimbursement funding grant program providing children and teens nutritious student lunches during their summer months. Our community thanks you for providing this grant enabling a vital service and the resulting smiles of healthy Westboro children and their families that directly benefit. Graciously, I welcome Governor Hilly for her remarks. Thank you so much. Well, thank you so much, Chair, and what a great day to be here in Westboro. It is a little warm, but it's nevertheless beautiful, and this is a beautiful school to Fales Elementary. Wow. Um, thank you to Superintendent Borches for the invitation and to the principal and all the staff here. It's great to see you all, and thank you for everything that you do throughout the year, and we're highlighting an effort that is a summer effort, um, but we know the work of our educators is year-round, and this is another example of that. I'm really proud and privileged to stand alongside your great Congressman Jim McGovern. There's been no greater champion for nutrition, access to food, looking after our kids um, in Congress than Congressman McGovern, and it's, uh, it's great to, to, uh, to be with you, and we just thank you for being the, the champion that you are on this important issue and representing <laughs> And we welcome from D.C. the administrator of the USDA, Cindy Long. Welcome to Massachusetts. Um, thank you for joining us and thank you for the Biden administration's commitment to ensuring that young people have access to the food that they need. You know, here we believe that no child in Massachusetts should go hungry. I know that is a sentiment and value shared by you and the president, and we thank you. And to our legislative partners here, uh, the district so well represented by Senator Mike Moore, we thank you for your work as well. And our colleagues in the administration. Um, we're here today with a few folks from the administration. One of Senator Moore's former colleagues and now our Director of Rural Affairs, Ann Gobi, is here, looking out for communities beyond just our cities, of course. We have our Commissioner Jeff McHugh of the Department of Transitional Assistance. And we have our secretaries, our secretaries of education and our secretary of health and human services. And I say that because what we're talking about, food, nutrition, it's fundamental to kids being able to learn. You cannot learn if you're hungry. And so I'm really pleased that Secretary Pat Tutwiler is here alongside our Commissioner Rus Russell Johnston of the Department of Elementary and Secondary Education. Um, and our Secretary of Health and Human Services, Kate Waltz, is also here because uh, so much of uh, our understanding of health, um, we know food is foundational, nutrition is foundational, and, and we appreciate the work that she and her team are doing. We have a lot of nonprofit partners in the room. I see you out there. Thank you for the work that you do, especially the work with our young kids in communities around Massachusetts. Um, Look, uh, I already said what we're about. We're about making sure that no child in Massachusetts goes hungry, not just during the school year, but all year round. I'm delighted that we were able to work so successfully with the legislature the last couple of years and grateful to them because in our first budget, we worked to make sure that free school meals were universal for every child in Massachusetts. And this year, um, That's something that our team, we're really proud of, and we know that as a result, in just a, a year alone, more than 12 million lunches more were served, more than six million breakfasts more were served, and 61,000 students more <laughs> uh, were served every day. That's a big deal. And the nice thing, having just come from this kitchen, uh, we all had a chance to actually look at the food, and it's all nutritious, it's uh, tasty, some of it's locally sourced, and we just are really grateful to all who work to make that happen. And because it's so important and so essential, uh, we went a step further this year, and thank you again to the legislature because uh, 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 we have now made it permanent. Uh, it was permanent in our 2024 budget, and, and hopefully I'll get to sign a budget soon. Once again, making sure that that's there. 
So um, we're here to celebrate. We're here to celebrate an exciting federal program. This is a permanent summer child nutrition program that will bring over $70 million to Massachusetts. $70 million from Congress and the Biden administration that is going to go to directly help our low-income households buy groceries throughout the summer. We expect that this investment alone is going to help nearly 600,000 families across Massachusetts, <laughs> making sure that they're able to buy food for their kids to eat at home, to eat at camp, to eat in the park, wherever they go. It's a win for families. It's a win as well for stores and our local economies. I talked about how much of this is going to be locally sourced. The first funds are due to go out next week, and we want to spread the word. So you all can help here today by making sure that people go to mass.gov slash summer EBT or the DTA Connect webpage where you can apply online. We have until September 7th to apply. Um, I also want to shout out Erin uh, McLear from Project Bread, who's been such an advocate in helping us get, uh, get so much done. <laughs> In combination with our Summer Eats program, we're feeding kids all summer long. Massachusetts, you know, we like to lead in a lot of things. It's important to us, right, to win and be on top. We're very competitive here. I don't think there's an area where it's more important than winning than when it comes to taking care of our kids and making sure that they have the nutrition that they need and that they deserve. That's what our team's been about. That's what this team has been about. That's what today's program furthers. And with that, I'd like to extend my thanks on behalf of our administration and the Commonwealth of Massachusetts to our USDA Food and Nutrition Service Administrator, soon to be Undersecretary, Cindy Long. Well, good afternoon, everyone, and thank you so much, Governor Healy, for inviting me here to join this wonderful celebration, and more importantly, for your leadership, not only on summer EBT, but on making sure families in the state are fed and a special congratulations on healthy school meals for all. I hope, I truly hope that Massachusetts and the other states that are taking this approach are showing the way for the rest of the country. Um, but we're here today to talk about summer, uh, which is, you know, time for fun and sunshine, but for too many families it can be a time of, of great distress. Because when you think about it, on an average day during the school year, about 20 million kids get a free or reduced price, about 12 of those get a school breakfast as well, and so suddenly, for parents and guardians of those kids, on that last day of school, what are, they do what are they looking at? They're looking at a whole summer where they suddenly have to provide two meals a day that they weren't during the school year. But thanks to uh, you know, leadership from folks like Congressman McGovern, we were able to get Congress to pass uh, some new tools to deal with the problem of summer hunger. So in addition to a program that we've had for a long time that we actually were able to see in action today, where uh, schools and uh, rec centers and church camps can bring kids together and provide them meals and to provide them programming like the wonderful garden program we saw today. Uh, that We're calling that our Sun Meals program. That works beautifully for the kids that it can reach, but it hasn't been able to reach all of the kids. Historically, we've only reached about one in six of the kids who receive free reduced price meals. So last summer, uh, we were able to kick off one of the new tools, and that's something we're calling Sun Meals to Go that serves rural areas. And what, what that program provides is the opportunity for uh, providers to deliver meals to hard to reach areas, or to set up a meal distribution site so parents can come and pick up meals for the week. And this year, this summer, we are here to celebrate kicking off a third tremendously exciting tool, which we're calling Sun Bucks. It is a summer EBT program that will provide families of kids who get those free and reduced price meals during the school year with, with $120 per child on a grocery card so they can help make up for those meals that their kids are not receiving at school. And I want to just take a moment and emphasize this is evidence-based policy at its best. We had the opportunity to rigorously test this approach. We found that it reduced severe hunger by one-third we found that it improved the nutritional quality of the kid food the kids were eating. And intuitively, we know it, was, it took a great amount of stress off of those families who would otherwise struggle to make up for those school meals during the summer. That is why President Biden included strengthening 
and expanding summer meals in his White House strategy to end hunger. The president led, about two and a half years ago, the first conference on hunger, nutrition, and health uh, in over 50 years. And the kind of initiative that we're celebrating today grew out of those efforts. So I want to just, again, congratulate Governor Healy, uh, Congressman McGovern, and the entire team that is here uh, representing the state. Uh, you know that, this, that setting up these programs is the right thing. We know that. But knowing that they're the right thing doesn't make it easy. Right? And I, I truly do appreciate how difficult standing up a program in a matter of months and bringing together multiple state agencies, that's a real challenge. Uh, I so really want to commend you and your entire teams for, for coming together and doing that. We know and you know that the reward for Massachusetts families is worth the effort. So again, we thank you so much for your collaboration with USDA. Um, now I'm going to go ahead and turn it to uh, Congressman McGovern. Uh, as you all know, he is one of, and I can attest to being a longtime resident of the Washington area, that uh, he is absolutely one of the most passionate and courageous champions uh, of fighting hunger and improving health. He has been key in establishing programs like this, but just as importantly, he has been key in defending the programs that we already have. So without further ado, I will... Turn the podium over to Congressman McGovern. Well, first of all, let me just say I am so happy to be here. It's not just because of the air conditioning. Um, I mean, you turn on the news and there's all kinds of negative stuff that uh, we're hearing about, and uh, sometimes it feels overwhelming. But to come here and to celebrate what we're celebrating today really gives us all hope that we can do amazing things, even in a polarized political environment. And I, I really appreciate that. And I am uh, I'm thrilled to be here with Governor Healy uh, and key members of her administration. I mean, one of the things you'll notice here is that uh, it's not just one agency or one department, it's multiple, uh, because to solve the problem of food insecurity and hunger requires a team effort. It's We can't just be silent. It's an all hands on deck approach. And I, I really appreciate her leadership in particular. She's been amazing. I'm so proud that she's our governor. I'm so proud that we're leading the way in combating food insecurity here in Massachusetts. It's great to be here with Senator Moore. I keep on calling her Senator Gobi, even though now she's part of the team here. Um, and again, uh, to Cindy Long, um, you know, who will uh, be the incoming deputy, deputy undersecretary for USDA Food, Nutrition, and Consumer Services. Uh, it's just great to be with all of you. I also want to thank the students who taught us about gardening um, and uh, their favorite uh, uh, herbs. And I want to pay a special tribute to the food service team who are here. Um, I, I, you know, my, my two sisters are school teachers uh, in Worcester, and I tell them all the time that our teachers are heroes, right? But so are the members of our food service team. Um, uh, you know, and this incredible uh, display that they just demonstrated to us. But I, I again, and I want to thank uh, the leaders here in Westboro. Uh, for all the work uh, that this community is doing to prioritize food security. Uh, Patrick, Allison, and, uh, and uh, Steve, thank you very much uh, for all that you're doing. This is an incredible school, and I appreciate getting uh, to know some gardening and, and meal prep today, but I'm a firm believer that every school in the Commonwealth and every school in the country should have a garden and, and hydroponics to teach kids about nutrition and where their food comes from. It is important. And every single school should have a modern kitchen to provide kids with scratch-cooked meals that incorporate local produce. And coming out of the Biden administration's White House Conference on Hunger, Nutrition, and Health, uh, by the way, it was my bill that authorized that, um, the, USDA, the USDA actually provided more funding for programs to improve nutrition at school. And they updated meal standards to make sure that kids are getting breakfast and lunches that are tasty uh, and nutritious. Food is essential, but food ought to taste good too, uh, and kids ought to enjoy their meals. I want to say thank you to President Biden, to Secretary Vilsack, to Cindy, and the entire team at USDA for that. None of this is easy. And in Congress, we're continuing to fight for more funding for those programs and for better reimbursement for school meals so the schools can continue improving meal offerings. Also coming out of that White House conference, uh, I, I worked really hard with uh, then Speaker Nancy Pelosi and Senate Agriculture Chair Senator Debbie Stabenow of Michigan to establish a permanent summer EBT program.
that gives families with kids extra money to buy food over the summer months when school is out of session and hunger is at its worst. The federal program uh, known as Sunbucks will serve over 21 million kids across the country, uh, helping them to access more nutritious food when school is out of session. Some people think that hunger is the worst during Thanksgiving and Christmas when we're all so generous. It is actually during the summer uh, when hunger spikes uh, in our country. It is incredible to see this program rolling out here in Massachusetts this month. And starting next week, eligible families, as has been mentioned, will get a one-time payment of $120 for eligible child. It will make such a difference for families struggling to get by. So we are taking this opportunity to not only celebrate the program, but to raise awareness for families who may qualify for this benefit, but who may not be auto-enrolled. This is a big deal, an incredible program that really has power to improve food security over the summer months. I appreciate the federal, the state, and the local officials who are joining us today for this important discussion. I am in awe of the advocates who are in the audience who have joined us as well. I learned so much about these programs from people on the ground who are actually working to implement these programs for families across our home state. I am so inspired by their work to expand our anti-poverty support system. And the final thing I'm going to say is, look, we live in the richest country in the history of the world. And we tolerate 44 million Americans being food insecure or hungry. I'm ashamed of that. Uh, and, you know, um, and I would like to say that we can snap our fingers on the federal level and get it all done, but it's going to take a while. In the meantime, it is so incredibly important that states like Massachusetts, that governors like Maura Healy are leading the way. I'm so proud to be from the state. Uh, this is not only progressive leadership, this is smart, effective leadership. And every penny we invest in these nutrition programs will save us a boatload of money and other costs down the road. So this is a big deal, uh, and I am uh, and I'm grateful to be part of this announcement. So at this point, um, I am now proud to turn this over to Superintendent Allison Borchers, um, who is a relatively new super you know, new superintendent. But I'm giving you credit for all the great things that are happening already. So. <laughs> And this is, in fact, day 11 on the job, so I'm excited to see you all here for such a, such a good reason uh, to gather together. Um, I want to echo Selectman Welch's welcome uh, to everyone here and to tell you what an honor it is to have you visit Westboro today. I have just a few comments, and they start off with a boatload of thank yous. Um, I know from experience that behind every program, like the Summer Food Service Program, there are a lot of folks working together to make sure kids will get what they need to grow and learn and thrive. We deeply appreciate the efforts, efforts by the USDA, by our Department of Education, and the Department of Health and Human Services, the Executive Office of Education, the State Legislature, the Governor's Office, and partner organizations like Project Bread as well as our town leaders working all together, all of you coming here to support our students. I need to acknowledge a few people right here in Westboro um, who I met like last week and are doing wonderful things that I cannot in any way, shape or form take credit for. Uh, first off, a huge thank you to Melissa Kane and to Anita Patel over in our finance department who actually wrote the grant to get funding to launch this program here. Um, it's really important to have the money to do the work that we need to do on behalf of kids. Uh, to Kelly, Jacopo, uh, I knew I was gonna do that, Jacopello, uh, and the grounds and building crew. Uh, we wanna make sure that not only are we providing meals for kids, but we're doing it safely. During the summer, as many of you know, is a busy time in schools. We have a roofing project happening. We have a lot of work. And so our, our whole team is really involved in the process of staging out where things happen, how they happen, and how to make sure families connect with this program safely. I want to thank uh, Jacob Martin and Kathy who put together these meals for kids every, every single day. Along with the meals program, Westboro, like many communities throughout the Commonwealth, uh, is a place where learning doesn't stop in the summer and kids' development doesn't stop in the summer. So uh, Brian Bacon and Don, our heads of our education program, our community ed program, run summer camp and summer enrichment program programming where kids can learn things like they did in our garden program launched by Ariel Via. Um, it's a fantastic opportunity for them to connect both this sort of abstract learning and a real life experience uh, around food. 
In addition, you may not know this, but we have a whole student services department, a huge team of people here on campus every day making sure all of our students get what they need to keep learning and keep growing during the summer. So thank you to all the folks involved in ESY. And everything that happens in our buildings happens with the support of our school administrators, our custodial team, and our support staff. So huge thank you to everybody whose name I don't know quite yet. <laughs> Uh, the project of caring for children is the very, very best work we can do as a city or a town, as a state, and as a nation. There are hungry children in every community, and our collaboration to make sure that they have good access to good food is both a moral obligation and a serious investment in our collective futures. Our students' access to meals ensures their access to learning, and the kids that we work together to feed today are going to be able to learn and grow into the people who are going to lead this country tomorrow. I'm a little biased as a school person, uh, but I can think of no greater project. I am so proud to live and work in a state that agrees with me. <laughs> uh, thank you, Governor Healy. Uh, I want to thank Lieutenant Governor Driscoll as well and Congressman McGovern for making this a priority, for championing, championing uh, universal free lunch and for making that a reality here in Massachusetts and I think my job now is to get out of the way and turn the podium back to Governor Healy. So thank, thank you. you. Well, thanks everyone. We're happy to take any questions on topic if there are any. All right. Well, have a great afternoon. Hydrate, okay? <laughs> and uh, thanks so much for having us here. It was a great school. Really appreciate it.